morning, ladies and gentlemen. John Cravada here from A Gentleman in Rome. And um, this week's topic, it's, um, let's, be, let's be frank, uh, not the most, not the happiest of the topics you could possibly think of. The fact is, I, I have lost a very dear friend of mine. You will never want to hear about this. Um, I know, yeah, people do pass away, and, and there's nothing we can do about it. So, in this blog post uh, that, I'm, that I uploaded, and um, it is called How to Dress Perfectly for a Friend's Funeral, uh, you will learn uh, not only that, but also the reason why you should do so, and as well as how to act accordingly. Um, see, the first thing I want you to know is that it is extremely important that you do attend a friend's funeral. But no, not only that, you should also be dressed appropriately for the occasion and, and you should do the right thing. Um, pay a visit to your friend's family because it's there you go. Express your sympathy and support uh, to the ones who are left behind and, um, and make yourself available and comport them. If you have good reasons to believe that the departed will be received in heaven, then do not hesitate to, to let them know. You know, you, you use a formula. It's not really a formula, but I think you need to express these things. Um, in this case, the, 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 my friend's name um, was Alessandro, so I said to his mother, Alessandro isn't dead because souls are uh, eternal. He just went to sleep. Uh, we'll see him again soon because time flies, so no worries. This is not a goodbye. This is just an arrivederci. And, and don't forget that God is in control. And in Alessandro is in the arms of God, and with his father and his grandfather, and he's doing better. He's doing better right now. You know, a good Bible word, verse to quote would be uh, Romans uh, fourteen, um, chapter fourteen, seven to nine, and, and I'll quote it for you. For none of us live it to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be the Lord, both of the dead and living. Um, it's a beautiful verse. Uh, if you want to quote Jesus himself, go for Matthew chapter four and chapter th five, sorry, and verse four quotes, "Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted." And quotes. Now, Alessandro Petruccioli was um, a good man, good father, and a good son. And I know we always say the same things about the people who die, but in this case, trust me, it's true. The whole town of Yepri was at the funeral, plus some more people who came from all over Umbria and beyond. I myself came from Rome. Um, there must have been at least 300 people at the funeral, at the church, and uh, that morning maybe more, and, and the long faces were all sincere. Alessandro was... Uh, also a very good friend of mine. Actually, we grew up together. Uh, that's because my parents used to take me and my sister to Viepri. Um, there's, there's a blog post, I can give you the link, uh, for the summer vacations. It was like going to the Hamptons in, is, if you're from New York. Uh, in the year 1990, I lived together with Alessandro at his parents' house uh, because we were renting the ground floor. Uh, our apartment in Rome was being renewed and, and so we decided to remain in Umbria uh, 
for that entire year. I was 13 and he was 18 and I used to look up to him. Alessandro was the older brother I never had. He protected me. He taught me many things. He was a great soccer player and he trained me patiently for months. So when I came back, when I, when I finally went back to Rome later that year, I was a better boy in every single way. Now, sorry for the digression, I, it was necessary. See, I argue that we should only attend funerals if we were actually close to the person who died. And if we do so, we, we should do it with the utmost respect. Respect begins before we even show up at church. It begins with choosing the proper outfit for the occasion. I said this times and times again. This is the only occasion in which a man should wear black. Charcoal is fine too, but a peach black suit would be ideal. Um, okay, a plain black suit, even if not particularly expensive, would be totally fine. This might sound strange to you, uh, but I don't possess a, ple a peach black uh, suit. She so strongly believe that a gentleman must be well dressed, but most importantly, he should always be appropriately dressed for the occasion. However, that does not require him to own an infinite number of suits, shirts, shoes, whatever. Um, in fact, come to think about it, I would advise you to avoid black suits. In terms of cost per wear, they are a disaster. True, you could acquire an ex inexpensive black suit, as I said, and, and, and hang it in your wardrobe for months and months, but um, cheap suits won't last very long, even in the wardrobe. Trust me on this. You would be better off uh, buying a three seasons charcoal suit like the Armani and wearing these pictures. This way you could actually use it. Um, a suit like this, you see, will serve you well when you're invited to a uh, black tie preferred or even a black tie optional event. Although I would suggest you invest some money in a tuxedo if you can afford it. At the same time, a quality uh, three buttons, two buttons, depending on your height, uh, charcoal suit such as um, this one, can also be worn uh, worn during formal business meetings, preferably in the eve afternoon or in the evening. The one thing I would like you to keep in mind is that you are not supposed to wear to be wearing a black shirt under a black suit because that's a little too much. You see, I'm wearing a white shirt, classic cut, made of cotton. Uh, which I bought from uh, Mosca54, one of my clients. Obviously, however, you cannot skip the black tie in, in this occasion. Uh, in my humble opinion, however, the skinnier the necktie, the better. Black is such an awful thing. A big black tie is a punch in the eye. That is the reason why I opted for an off-white pocket square to, to balance things out a little. Oh, and notice the TV fold. Um, this is, once again, the only occasion in which I suggest you fold your pocket square in this way. Um, you might want to opt for an expensive necktie in this case, because it is unlikely that you're going to use a black a necktie in any other occasion, in any other context. So the one I'm wearing is still made in silk and is a good quality but it's not expensive and I, and I bought it from the Thai shop Rome which is another client of mine. Um, as for the shoes I, I would go for a pair of solid Oxfords I mean there's nothing better than that. Um, I'm wearing uh, a Meluso Oxfords uh, here um, I'll give you the link to Meluso it's, I think it's a very good brand it is important that you keep in mind another thing. Um, you can save money on your suit, on your shirt, on your hat, on your sunglasses, even on your wristwatch if you want. 
but you must never save money on your shoes and and a funeral is one of the occasions during which you would be thankful for the money you have invested in a good pair of shoes because you likely have to walk a couple of miles uh, from the church to the cemetery and, and vice versa. Now the, the wristwatch, um, you know what, P just pick the best dress watch you own. But first possibly opt for a dress watch with a, with a black dial uh, and a black leather strap would be ideal. If you don't own one, go for a, a steel bracelet instead. But don't wear a watch if you don't own one with a black dial. Here I'm wearing my beloved uh, vintage Rolex Oyster Day Day. Um, finally, a good pair of black sunglasses uh, will serve you well. Uh, let's be honest, you, you likely cry if you were particularly attached uh, to your friend. And look, it is okay to cry, but remember, you must try and be strong for the people who are actually grieving the loss of a family member. And here I'm, wear, I'm wearing a pair of Maui and Sons. Um, and a black hat like the one I'm wearing will protect you from the sun and at the same time uh, will make you less visible. Now discretion uh, is mandatory in such a context in my opinion. And in a similar occasion, in fact, you likely meet many old friends but it would be better to postpone uh, cheerful greetings at a later time. It is inappropriate to laugh and have fun at a, uh, or have a good time during the funeral. It's disrespectful, it's in bad taste, avoid it. The hat would serve you well because you could just tip it to show your friends respect and at the same time let them know that you're not available for a jovial tete-a-tete at least for the time being. See, nothing can prevent you from joining uh, your old friends at the local bar of a later time. But even in such occasion, remember to steer the conversation toward the friends who's missing. The topic must be his life, not yours. Agree with your friends uh, to support the relatives of the, the dead one while they're grieving. In theory, the community should be supporting the relatives of your friend um, and they must never be left alone unless they explicitly ask to be left alone. So this is how to dress perfectly for your friend's funeral and now you also know the reason why you should do so, you should dress this way and also you learn how to act accordingly. Let me tell you, I don't hope that you will never lose a dear friend because that would be out of touch with reality. But I do hope that God will be with you uh, at that time. Now remember, God is responsible for the evil things that happen in the world. But he is the only one who actually knows the reasons why bad things happen as well as in which way they are going to be used for good. God uses evil so that good might come out of it. However, no evil can come directly out of God himself. The prince of the power of the air um, is actually the one who should be blamed. Uh, Satan, aka the son of the morning, the deceiver, the serpent of old, cannot harm or kill anybody without first receiving permission from God himself. Read the book of Job. Luther used to say that even the devil is the God's devil, um, after all, right? Um, but Satan can influence the life of each and every one of us in a way that will lead to a premature death if we don't claim the victory in Christ that we already have. Now, uh, guys, feel free to ask me questions if you're uncertain about the subject of funerals and, and God. And um, you can reach me out uh, via my Instagram account, which is John Cravada, John underscore Cravada.
or my Facebook page or my blog a gentleman in Rome or via via email you, you you'll find the contact info on my blog uh, so remember spiritual feelings can only be discerned spiritually uh, it's all folks for today have a great day arrivederci